Let's talk about color balance. We're going to take this raw file and turn it into this image. As you see, we do have a nice balance between some more warmer tones and some colder tones all going on throughout this image. If you want to follow along, you can as always find the raw file in the link of the description of this video. And now let's begin. We're going to start this off in Lightroom. And we will be working on an HDR image. This means we first need to merge the HDR. Down here you can see the five bracketed images. We are going to select them all, right click, choose Photo Merge and choose HDR. I'm not changing anything here. I'm just keeping the auto align box checked. And with this out of the way, let's hit the merge button. And here we have our HDR file. Now, before we start thinking about colors, we first, as always, need to get the base exposure right to get a better idea of the image. I'm going to start this by increasing the exposure, making everything brighter. I'm not going too crazy since I don't like what raising the exposure is doing to the highlights. So instead of just raising the exposure, let's also bring up the shadows and we can safely bring them up all the way since we are working with an HDR file. And I also want to bring up the blacks to further get out details of those darkest areas just like this. And at this point, you can see a very bright blob of sky right here, which we want to fix by bringing down the highlights. Okay, this is looking much, much better. We can actually see a few things. And at this point, we can get a better idea of what the image will look like. So right now, you can see a very heavy blue color cast. I really like those blue tones in the sky, but to achieve that color balance, we want to introduce some warmer color tones in this image as well. And the first step to do this is always going to be the white balance. So to reduce blue color tones and introduce some more warmer color tones, we want to make use of that temperature slider. I'm going to raise it quite a bit. So let's say right about here. At some point you might be struggling setting the white balance as it is right now, it almost seems like we are losing colors. So if you want to get a better idea, a cool trick is to simply erase the vibrance and the saturation all the way up to 100. Now what you can see is we do have some very warm tones right here on the left side, but we still have those blue color tones towards the top of the image. You can use those saturation settings to further adjust the white balance to your liking. As I push up the temperature slider, you can see when the warmer tones are overwhelming all the other blue color tones of the image. So right about here, it starts to look a little bit too much for my taste. I wanna, I wanna go back to the setting I was using previously. I think that's a very good spot to start the edit with. Now, once we have set up the white balance, we can bring back the vibrance and the saturation. Actually, let's raise them a bit. Of course, we want this image to be a little more saturated than it is right now. I'm also going to raise the saturation for this image. Okay, right about here should be fine for now. And that's looking pretty good. Before we start working on the masking, let's also add a little bit of texture. And I want to increase the clarity just a little bit to get a sharp looking image. Wonderful. So that is our image after the base adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see we did fix the exposure and we also adjusted the colors. At this point of the editing, the colors might look a little bit weird, but don't worry about that too much for now, since we just only have set the white balance and some saturation. Let's continue applying some masking. First off, I wanna make the subject brighter. I'm going to create a subject mask and then I want to further work on that selection by subtracting a linear gradient. We don't really need that part on the right side, just like this. And I'm also going to subtract a linear gradient from the bottom up. I don't think that reflection is that important. Now let's make the subject a little brighter by bringing up the exposure. I'm also going to raise the shadows again. And I want to bring up the whites. And let's add some texture and clarity to give this building some structure. Okay, while we're adjusting that building in the center, we can see this building is looking a little bit too cold. At this point, we can further work on the color balance by making 
this building a little warmer. So again, what we want to do is make use of that temperature slider, introducing some more temperature and thus reducing the blue color cast of our subject. Don't want to overdo it because otherwise it looks really, really unnatural quite fast. So let's just go with something like this. Wonderful. Then I want to create a radial gradient covering this reflection in the foreground. And in here, I just want to bring up the clarity to make that reflection look a little more interesting. Could make it a little bigger, but that's looking great. Now let's create a sky selection. And I'm going to use a little trick to make that sky selection a little more precise. I'm going to hit the subtract button and I'm going to choose subtract select sky. You can now see we do have selected the, some of these edges here, especially the tree branches. If I hover over our sky mask, click the three dots and hit invert, we will get a more precise selection this way. I know this doesn't really make much sense, but it works. So it's really, really good to know this trick. What I want to do with this mask now is to click on those three dots up here, choose intersect mask width and choose a radial gradient. I'm going to target just the lower part of the sky on the right side. And what I want to do in here is to bring up the exposure, adding some kind of glow behind that building. Wonderful. Then let's create another sky selection. Again, I am applying this trick. So let's say subtract, choose sky and invert this mask. Again, I want to further modify this mask by subtracting a linear gradient. And now I'm just subtracting all the cold colors from the sky like this. I pretty much only want to have the warmer tone selected, maybe even a bit on the right side where we still have some colder color tones. And what I want to do with this selection is first, I want to bring up the saturation. And what I want to do as well is to add some warmth to that part of the sky. And I'm not doing this by using the temperature slider. Instead, I'm going to use this color box down here. Click on it. And now I'm choosing a very specific color. So let's set up the hue. I'm going with something very warm in the orange range. And I'm going to bring up the saturation all the way, just like this. So we do get some warm glow behind our subject and mostly on the left side. All right, that looks great. Now let's further work on the left side by using a radial gradient. Here we want to subtract the landscape in the foreground to not affect it. So I'm going to click on those three dots again, choose intersect mask width and choose select sky. This way we get a perfect selection for that sky area right here. And all I want to do here is to again use the white balance temperature slider, bring it up and thus introduce more warmth to this particular area of the, of the sky. At this point, it might be a little bit too much yellow. So I'm also going to bring up the tint, kind of making it look more orange. Wonderful. And now let's create one more radial gradient for that area of the sky. Actually, I don't even need to only select the sky. I can leave it like this. What I want to do in here is to increase the whites. This will basically only affect the sky since there are no, not that many whites in that foreground. And the reason for me to increase the whites in this area is I want to make this part of the sky a lot brighter than the top part. So this kind of creates some glowing effect, which I think just looks really, really nice. At this point, the reflection is a little bit too dark. So we want to bring it closer to that counterpart in the sky. I'm also going to use a radial gradient for that. Just trying to find the right spot like this. Again, I'm going to increase the whites and I'm also going to bring up the temperature to match the color. Perfect. We could make it a little bigger maybe. But that's looking great. I think the center is still a little too dark. So I'm using a radial gradient to cover the center like this. And in here, I am going to very slightly bring up the exposure. And I'm also going to raise the shadows. Okay, then there's one more mask I want to apply for some mid-tones contrast. And I'm using a luminance range mask for that. What I mean by mid-tones contrast is I want to add contrast, but I don't want to affect the darkest blacks and the brightest 
whites. So I'm going to take this point and I'm going to drag it down. This way I'm filtering out the darkest blacks. Now I'm going to the whites and bring down this point to filter out the brightest highlights. Now with this mask we still have a very very sharp edge which we don't want so I'm going to bring this point down which will just make the edge of the mask a lot softer. And of course we can do the same for the highlights. And I also want to subtract the sky from this luminance range mask. Now we're going to only affect the midtones of the landscape in the foreground. And what I want to do here is to bring up the exposure. I want to bring up the highlights. And to add contrast, I'm going to drop the shadows very, very slightly. Perfect. And I guess that's it for the masking adjustments. Let's take a look at the image without the masks for a moment so you can see the difference from before to after. What's really important here is you can see how the colors got a lot more intense in this area on the left than at the top or at the bottom of the image where we have all those blue color tones. So the reason for me to make the warmer color tones on the left side more intense is because we didn't have as much warm color tones to begin with. By making them more intense than the blue color tones, we are working towards a better color balance. So after finishing the masking adjustments, we can focus a little more on the color grading. I want to start this in the color mixer tab and I first want to work on the hue. Since at the moment, this yellowish color tone on the left looks a little bit weird to me. I want to make it look more orange. So I'm going to grab the yellow hue slider and bring it down. Much better. We can further improve that by bringing down the orange hue slider like this. And I think that looks great. Now let's work on the saturation. I want this whole image to be more vibrant. So I'm going to bring up pretty much all the color tones of the image. Let's start with red. I'm also going to increase orange, but I'm going to increase a little, I'm going to increase it a little more. I'm also going to bring up the yellow tones quite a bit. And at this point, I also want to make the blue tones a little stronger, but I want to be really, really careful to not overdo it. Right about here looks good to me. So let's close the color mixer. Then the split toning. Here we want to be really, really careful because we can quickly destroy the color balance of this image by using too much split toning. Let's start with the highlights. Of course, we want the highlights to be warmer than the shadows. So we want to set a warm hue for the highlights first. Let's see, somewhere around here. And now let's play around with the saturation. I'm going to carefully raise it just right about here. Might be a little too much because the colder color tones are starting to disappear. So I want to bring down the saturation a bit. I still want to keep it rather high so we can create a very stylized image like this without losing those blue color tones. I can also head over to the midtones. So if you have the feeling the image is lacking some colder color tones again, we just go with the colder hue and bring up the saturation. As you can see, this works really, really nicely for this scene, but I think we could use a little more warmth. I'm going to set up the hue to something warmer again. And at this point, you can see we are completely losing the color balance since everything just appears to be warm. I'm going to turn down the saturation to kind of fix that. Right about here looks good. So we have the warmer left side competing against the colder top and bottom part of the image. Wonderful. We can further improve the colors in the calibration tab. Here I always get the right result by just playing around with those sliders. In this case, I'm just bringing down the red primary hue a bit and I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue as well. And at this point, it might seem like we are losing some saturation, especially in the colder color tones. So I'm going to bring up the saturation here and just like that, I can fix it. I think that looks wonderful. We're pretty much done with the adjustments in Lightroom. Let's compare to before. And you can see a completely different image. The colors do look better, the exposure is better. So overall, I am quite happy with this. 
what we can do now is let's open up the lens correction tab and remove chromatic aberration. And I also want to sharpen this image in the details tab, bringing down the radius, increasing the detail, add a bit of masking and bring up the amount of sharpening. All right, and that looks good to me. I hope I was able to give you some helpful information in regards to color balance and how to achieve it in Lightroom. If you have any questions or anything to add, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.